Welcome, Julie. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here, Cheryl. On September 1st, you became the global CEO of Accenture. What was your first message to the 500,000 worldwide employees? Well, as you can imagine, when I thought about what my first message should be when you're sending it to 500,000 people, you think mm. carefully. And uh, I thought it was really important in my first message to establish something that's very important to me, which is the importance of learning. And I wanted to be clear that uh, at Accenture, we have leader-led learning, meaning I am going to be the role model for what we believe all of our people should be doing and what we need to do for our clients. And so I talked about in my very first message about how I set a quarterly learning agenda for myself and I created my own what we call a learning board where any of our 500,000 employees can actually look online and see what I'm learning about and what materials I'm using and we'll update that quarterly to reflect my quarterly learning agenda. In the fast-paced technology-driven industry such as yours, what do you see as the biggest roadblock to progress with your clients? When we look at the environment today that our clients are operating in, one of the biggest roadblocks is the ability for large companies to act with speed. And often that is rooted in a culture that grows up in large companies, which as they become larger, become more risk adverse uh, frequently in wanting everything to be perfect. And uh, when you're trying to move uh, quickly, you cannot be, you know, have the standard of perfection. You can have a standard of excellence, but not of perfection. And so helping companies understand that they've got to move fast enough and that they're not, by the time they get the perfect design, where they were going has already changed is uh, an important part of what we do in terms of how to be excellent but fast. Let's talk a little bit about communication styles. I understand you're a big believer in the power of storytelling. And I was wondering, how do you marry that and balance that with the metrics-driven, data-intensive world of consulting? Well, the first uh, thing when I think about the importance of storytelling in a consulting environment, or fr frankly in any corporate environment, is I start with the result that you're trying to achieve is never about the metric. And if you always begin with, what am I trying to achieve? And whether that's you're in the corporate world or the consulting world, and then talk from the goal backwards, that's why you have the power of storytelling, right? And too often, metrics become the end when the end is actually an outcome. And that's why storytelling can really force you to focus on the outcome and not the inputs and the metrics. I understand Accenture is committed to achieving a gender balanced workforce by 2025. How do you plan to get there? And what tools should companies use to build diverse workforces? Well, we are really excited that we announced a recent milestone towards our goal of being 50-50 um, men and women by 2025, which we are now at 44%, which is really exciting. And there's really been two uh, key parts to our journey uh, towards gender equality. The first is that we set as a business strategy becoming a more inclusive and diverse company. We truly believe that the reason we've been so successful in digital technology and innovation is because we are committed to inclusion and diversity, which means we have leaders who are accountable, we have plans, and we measure it. And the second reason we've been so successful and, and are confident in meeting our goals is around data. Because in order to measure it, you have to have good data and you have to use that data. And what we've found in some of our research is that while many companies talk about a commitment, and they truly are committed, they're missing both a business strategy, but also they're often missing the data that's needed to provide the insights and how do you make the changes to achieve your goal. If you were to look back on your career now, what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? You know, when I think about the advice I've received over the years, one um, particular piece of advice stands out for me. One of our former directors was speaking to a group of us, and she said that if you're given the opportunity to take a role that you feel like is a stretch role, when you're given that opportunity, simply say yes, 
and then go and tell your you know your friend or your husband or your partner how nervous you are because chances are that the person giving you the stretch roll is as nervous about giving it to you as you are about receiving it. And I think it's really important as each of us are challenged to take on new roles to remember that it's natural to have doubts, but don't share them with the person that mm -hmm. is giving you the role. Because most often you probably can do it too, even if you're, you're nervous about it. Well, you know, I think a lot about uh, this idea of taking risks, and I've reframed it in my career as opposed to taking risks. It is about challenging myself. So my husband put this plaque on the wall that says, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. Right? If your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. Right. And for me, that's really about you know, if you think about your career in terms of taking risks, that doesn't feel good. If you think about your career, about having big dreams and challenging yourself, you know, that's inspiring and exciting. And so I think it's important to think about taking on these new challenges is that having big dreams. Thank you very much for joining us in the studio and we look forward to your talk soon. Great, thanks for having me.